Hello again, everybody. This is Dan Clouser, and welcome back to the Journey of My Mother's Son podcast. Joined again today with another one of the disciples in the Dream Center Success Program, Edward Medlin. Edward, thanks for joining me today. Yeah, thanks for having me. No problem. Appreciate you taking the time. On uh, This is actually being recorded on New Year's Eve, so yes. it'll be, uh, be released in 2022, but we're spending New Year's Eve sitting here having a chat. There you go. So uh, most of the guys I've talked to here, um, you know, they're, they're in the program due to some sort of addiction to drugs or alcohol or a combination of the two. Um, not the case for you. You're only 18 years old, going on 19. Yep. Um, thought you were gonna be starting your freshman year of college yep. um, in January here. Um, but instead you're at the, the Dream Center. So tell me a little bit about your addiction um, and what got you here to the Dream Center and what you're looking to get out of it moving, moving forward because you've got, you know, truthfully your entire life ahead of you. Yeah. So my addiction is porn and it's been with me for quite some time and it got to the point where I pretty much desired it a lot, and... Now, now, when you say a lot, are you talking like an hour a day? Uh, Probably like any time I could get alone, that's what I was doing, and I pretty much had the whole day to myself because it came to the point where I couldn't hold a job anymore because that's how much I wanted it. Wow. So... And I think that puts it into perspective. I mean, I think a lot of my listeners, you kind of have a, a somewhat relative understanding of being addicted to, you know, drugs and alcohol. Yeah. Um, I don't know necessarily that they have a real understanding of what it means to be addicted to pornography. Um, so, I mean, I think the fact that you couldn't hold down a job because it had that type of a grip on you. Yeah. Um, is a pretty telltale sign that this was a serious issue. Um, so, again, I interrupted, but um, <laughs> go good. ahead and carry on with your story. And so my recent job was at Chick-fil-A. I'd been there for about four, four and a half years. Um, and then after I lost the job because of my addiction, then my parents were like, there's something wrong with him. You know, he can't hold a job, couldn't hold my money. It was a pretty bad situation. So they came to me and they're like, well, you're 18. We can't force you to go anywhere. You know, you can make the decision on your own. But we really hope you make this one decision. It's completely up to you. And so before we left our little table that we had there, uh, they wanted me to decide so they knew how to go forward. And I have three little younger brothers that we adopted. And I knew that I still wanted to be their big brother. I needed to get some help. So after some doing some looking and some research, we figured that the Dream Center was the best place for me. Yeah, and uh, you knew the Dream Center. You knew yes. about the Dream Center. Um, uh, you even knew some of the guys that were here yeah. in the program. So <clears throat> I guess there was probably a little bit of, of a comfort level with that, but probably a little bit of anxiety that went along with that decision. Well, probably a whole mixed bag yeah. of emotions to making the decision to actually come here. Um, so walk me through that a little bit as to you know how you dealt with that and what made you finally say, mm-hmm. You know, the, the reward is greater than the risk. <laughs> yeah, so, like you said, like, it, it was definitely a comfort thing because I'm cl- closer to home than some other places. Um, and there was also a weird aspect of it because I knew the people here. Like, I feel like it would be kind of weird that I knew people and they're like, oh, you're here now? And then, of course, the anxiety, it was, it, it, it was pretty high. 
and it, it was points where I couldn't concentrate on what I was thinking about and what people were saying because I couldn't, the anxiety sort of took over. And then about a weekend after I sort of figured out where I was and kind of calmed down a little bit and I started, we did that prayer walk and for a week, a week or two, week and a couple of days, I was just walking. I wasn't praying, I wasn't talking about nothing. I was just looking down at the ground and just walking till it was time to eat. And then, and then I started praying and then I realized, you know, after God told me, you know, thank you for choosing to get help. And, you know, I'm always here kind of thing. And after, after a couple of prayer walks, it that's helped me greatly to figure out that you know there is a better me, and I'm gonna get there. Yeah, that's awesome. So once you got into the program, and the fact that you did know some of the guys that were in the program, yeah, um, <clears throat> you know, did they kind of? You know, except you, you know, as the little brother, I mean, you're the youngest guy yeah. in, in the program here by, you know, probably eight or ten years. Um, yeah, so at first, you know, I got here relatively around, like, morning, afternoon time. So, like, I was here right before lunch. So after I got all my stuff done, I went over to lunch, and they were like, Oh hey, it's good to see you again. Like, what are you doing here? Like, are you an intern? Are you like, you know, like, what's going on here? I'm like, no, I'm here in the program. And they're like, wait, what? And like, that's awesome. <laughs> they're like, like it's always good to have someone, you know, that you know come into the program. Right. Like, so I mean, they took me in as a little brother, as a, as a good friend. So. Yeah. That's cool. And has that been able to help you? Um, you know, get through the program. You know, some of these guys have kind of taken you under their wing a little bit. Yeah, I would say that is very much true because you know, if I didn't know anybody, it'd be hard for me to go to somebody and try to tell them what issues I'm having. Where uh, I went to a couple of guys last night that I knew really good, and I asked them some questions, and the fact that they understood what I where I'm coming from, right. and that they had been here for. Couple months. Right, a, a different addiction, but yes. an addiction nonetheless. So, them being here has definitely helped. Yeah. Um, last night during uh, Psalms and Proverbs, you had some very kind words to say to Nathan. Yes. Um, you know, if you can kind of give a little recap, and, and again, what you know, I, I know you said a lot of the guys have. You know, kind of taking you under their under their wings, um, but it seemed like, from what I could tell from an outsider last night, hearing that, it was incredibly touching. Um, okay. So, you know, it seems like Nathan has definitely been a guy who has, you know, helped you in the early stages of this journey. So, if you yeah. can share a little bit about that and what that means to you. So, like, when I first got here, well, yes, I knew some of the people. I'm very much, when I get comfortable in the places that I'm at, I'm very much a people person. So I will talk to anybody, whether they're in the mood of talking or not. And uh, someone told me I should go talk to Nathan. And I'm like, okay. But I didn't know at the time that Nathan wasn't really kind of like a talkative guy. So I just went over there and I just started talking to him and we were having a good time. And uh, then we got to laughing or whatever, and then, you know, a couple of nights went by, I was feeling down. He came over and cheered me up, like, he's the guy that will cheer me up when I'm down. When I'm happy, we'll laugh together, you know. He's, he's there when I need him. Yeah, and always looking out for me. That's awesome. And, and I think, you know, that's a big part of this recovery process yeah. is having that, you know, support system. Um, obviously, you know, your family supportive of this um, because again, they didn't force you 
to come here. I think they gently nudged you, maybe a little more than gently nudged you, but at the end yeah. of the day, they still said, it's your decision. And, and I think they, they probably understood that the only way that you could get the help you needed is if you recognized that you got the help you needed. I mean, yeah. they can send you anywhere they want to send you, and if you just go in there kicking and screaming and you know stubborn against the process, doesn't matter. This this would be the the first of many many more stops in sure. in places like this. So, you know, was there any one thing, you know, any aha moment for you, where you accepted the fact that you needed help and you were not going to be able to overcome this problem on your own? Yeah, it was. It's about five, six weeks ago, uh, you know, I had been out of a job for a little bit and I was sitting there uh, playing my guitar and I just stopped and uh, it was, like it just hit me like, what am I doing with myself, you know, like I need help. But like, I'm also the type of guy who I'm scared to tell people I need help. I completely understand that. Um, so for me to go tell my mom or my dad, hey, like I have this really big issue, I need help, was something I could never do. But it came to the point where I was like, I need to. Um, so a couple of weeks went by and I didn't say anything, but they could tell I had something to say. So they, pretty much knew that I needed help. And so they were like, we got the two need help. And so they were like, here's how we're gonna help. And, but like, my big aha moment was, I'm sitting there playing guitar for my little brother. Cause he likes to see me play guitar and playing one of his favorite songs. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, if I keep going the way I'm going, like it's gonna, it's gonna turn out bad. Like I need, I need some serious help. Yeah. So, so, um, <clears throat> like I said, you your original plans for this time of year, um, you know, you figured you'd be getting ready to start your your freshman year of college. Yeah. Um, obviously, that's been postponed. Uh, timing postponed, but still, you know, on the radar. So, what, you know. What are your goals moving forward? Um, you know, once you graduate from the program, um, you know, what are you looking to do? Because uh, again, you, you've got your entire life ahead of you at this point, so. Yeah, so it all depends on when I get out. Um, if I get out in three months, if I get out in six months, or if I go the whole year. Um, if I end up doing the whole year, then I'll finish out the rest of 2022 with my family and then starting spring semester of 2023 I'll be going to college um, but if I get out early then I'll keep doing what I've been doing before this I was a volunteer at my local church um, I was there pretty much Every day the doors were open. I was there on Tuesday nights. I was there on Sundays for long periods of time. And so like that kept me busy, playing my guitar, you know, doing that kind of stuff. And then if I get out in time, then I would end up trying to go in the fall of 2022. Um, so those would be my plans. So, um... And obviously, all those plans are fluid. Yes. It, it seems like you're you're open to the concept of um, however long it takes. Yes. Um, yeah. You know, whether that is a three month program, whether it's a six month program, or you know the full year um, success discipleship uh, discipleship program. So, how difficult is it for you to kind of? <clears throat> leave that decision somewhat in limbo. I mean, I think we all really like to plan ahead and know what our future has. Yeah. Um, but to really trust God's timing 
because uh, I know that's one thing that me personally have a very difficult time. My my timing and God's timing, yeah, uh, very seldom line up. You know, like <laughs> when I make a decision to you know move forward with something, yeah, like I want it done now. You know, and yeah. uh, he's he's pulling back the reins sometimes. You know, and it's like no, no, wait, just we're not ready yet. Just just wait. So, you know, for you, how difficult is it to just trust the process and trust God's timing? Um, at first, when I started this whole college journey, it was pretty hard. Um, and then when I got here, it was super hard because like, I was mad because I couldn't be able to go to college. Um, but then after I started praying and I started getting back into it, then I realized, you know, it's not my story to write, it's his story. Mm -hmm. And so I just need, I just had to accept the fact that, you know, why yes, college is an option that might not be an option right now. And, you know, why it may seem like a hard thing for me to do. Um, it, it, it's pretty easy now for me to just sit back, think a moment, pray about it, and just make sure that the way that I proceed is the way he wants me to proceed. Right. So. I think um, that's a huge testament for someone, you know, as young as you are, to be able to accept that. Yeah. Because again, I mean, I think, you know, most humans, um, that's, that's something that we struggle with. Um, like I said, I mean, I'll openly admit that that is definitely one of my issues it's, yes you know understanding his timing and you know patience and uh, you know not trying to force things uh, and just trusting that you know in his time it will it will all come together so I definitely commend you for being able to to recognize that now is that is that something that you've been able to learn just in the short time that you're here in the program um, or like when did you really start to trust his timing? Um, that's a good question. Uh, I've, it's, it's been off and on a lot, uh, you know, some periods of my life I let him just take control. I just let him take the steering wheel and just go with it. Some days, some years, I'll just grab the steering wheel and I'll just go for it. And that's usually when I hit a ditch and it doesn't go so well for me. Yeah. And so, uh, but through the help of my parents, friends, grandparents, you know, they've, brother and sister, they like, they've taught me to, you know, just let him take control let him have it all. You just have to follow it. Right. Whether or not you agree with it, you just have to go with it. Right. So it comes back to that support system again. Yes. You know, just having that strong support system and, you know, people encouraging you and yeah. guiding you, um, but yet not controlling you. Yeah. You know? um, so um, that, that's awesome. And again, I commend you for for being able to accept that. Um, so we're, uh, we're just about out of time. Is there anything that we didn't cover that you'd like to talk about before I get to my final question? Not that I know of. I think we pretty much covered. Cool. So as you know, the subtitle of the podcast is Many Little People in Many Little Places, which comes from the opening lyrics of a song, which go, when many little people in many little places do many little things and the whole world changes. So what's one of the little things that Edward's doing on a daily basis to make the world a little bit better place? Um, Edward does quite a few things. Uh, he will, uh, I, what do you Get up in the morning, and I will say encouraging things to just about everybody. And uh, I make sure no one's left behind, because um, you never want someone left behind. Mm -hmm. um, and 
you know, if I see a brother down, I'm going to him. You know, whether I want to or not, I'm I'm gonna go see what's up. Right. So, and I make sure everyone has a good day. That's cool. So, that's very cool. I like that answer a lot. Um, I wish you the best of luck. Um, Thank you. Sandy, I will definitely be praying for you on uh, as you continue this journey, and uh, I'm sure that the Lord has some really special things yeah. planned in your life, and it's just He's you know working on molding you into the person that He wants you to be while you're while you're here. So for sure, trust the process, trust Him, trust His timing, and uh, you know, no matter how difficult it is, don't be afraid to ask these guys around you um, yeah. questions and you know take advantage of that support system that you have because you know unfortunately um, a lot of people dealing with addiction don't necessarily have the greatest support system so yeah. that's a huge advantage for you and uh, you definitely want to utilize that to you know the best of your ability for sure, sure. so uh, folks out there listening be sure to check out my blogs and other podcasts at danclauser.com Edward, thank you again for taking the time. I know, uh, you know sometimes it can be difficult to share your stories with you. And, uh, you know, everybody that I've talked to, I've commended them on their you know, vulnerability, um, which really, in my mind, equates to bravery to, you know, to be able to come out and, and tell that story. So I appreciate your time. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for having me.